In 1891, no fossils of Australopithecus had yet been found. In fact, the only fossil humans that had been discovered were Neanderthals, dismissed by many simply as pathological modern humans. Just 20 years earlier, Charles Darwin had published The Descent of Man, in which he formulated many of his ideas about human evolution. If Darwin was right, then scientists should eventually discover fossils of creatures that are not quite human and not quite ape. Though Darwin hypothesized that these fossils would be found in Africa, other scholars, such as Ernst Haeckel, argued that they would reside in Asia, given the close similarity between humans and orangutans. Remember, DNA had also not been discovered yet, so there was no way of knowing which of the apes was most closely related to humans. Heichel not only hypothesized the existence of this half-man, half-ape, he even gave it a name, Pithcanthropus erectus. The writings of Darwin and Henkel attracted the attention of a young Dutch anatomist named Eugene Dubois. Dubois became obsessed with finding fossils of these early humans, and in 1887 he moved to Indonesia, which was at the time a Dutch colony. Four years into his search, on the banks of the Solo River near a village called Trinel, Dubois found a tooth, a partial skull, and a femur. The femur indicated that this creature walked on two legs, but the brain was only about a thousand cc's. It was too small to be a human brain, and too large to be from an ape. It was exactly what he was hoping to find, and Dubois named it Pacanthropus erectus. We now know these fossils by a different name, Homo erectus. Though, as we've already learned, the earliest hominids are from Africa, not Asia. These fossils were an important first step in our understanding of the evolution of our own genus Homo. In this lecture, we will discuss the evolutionary changes that characterize the earliest members of our own genus. How do we know we've discovered a fossil from Homo and not from Australopithecus? Next, we will look at fossils from the very earliest members of our own genus. These are typically categorized into the species Homo habilis, though there is some evidence that there may have been two different species of early Homo coexisting in Africa. Soon after the evolution of our genus, a different kind of hominid evolved, Homo erectus. Homo erectus is what Dubois found in Java, and we will look at this fascinating global species in detail. In particular, we will look at the evolutionary trends that happened in the Homo erectus lineage and how anatomically and behaviorally adaptations in this species set the stage for the evolution not only of our own genus Homo, but of our species Homo sapien. Let's dive in with a look at the first species of Homo, Homo habilis.